Hello, hello. A few weeks ago, Jose Valim shared that they had added a new guide in the Elixir Lang website on something they called optional syntax. Now, this is not new, but it was really interesting and I want to share with you. So basically what it's saying is that the core of Elixir syntax is very small, but in order to make it expressive and legible, like easy to understand, there's some conveniences that allow us to write things in a different way. So let's take a look at it. I have a module here, Ranger account. It has a function, admin user, and it's a, it has an if else statement, right? If the account is internal, it'll return the user. And if it's not, it returns that Adam invalid account. It's not really that important what this is doing, but the whole point is that there's an if statement inside a function inside a module. So uh, let's go ahead and exercise this. If you see, we have here an admin user we're calling with internal true and user Joe. So that should return Joe. And sure enough, it does. And of course, we have if we have pass internal false, we should get that invalid account. And it does. Okay, so let's take a look at this. If you've done any amount of Elixir, you probably know that you can rewrite this if else statement like this. Maybe you want to uh, include it in a single line, right? So we remove the end and we just create, make this do else into a keyword list. But what's interesting here is if you look at this, you'll realize that if is a function call, it's a macro, but that means that the parentheses are optional, which means you can also add the parentheses back in there. And if you add the parentheses, you'll realize that we're passing one argument here and then a keyword list. Now keyword lists, if they're the last argument of a function, don't require you to include the square brackets. But of course, if we want to, we can include them. And that's not all. If this is a keyword list, we could actually write this like a regular keyword list. So we can make this into tuples, which is really what that keyword list is evaluating to. Awesome. So as you can see, this is a little bit different. Let me go, go ahead and recompile and run those two things and it still works. But that's not all because if is a macro, but so is def. And so we can do the same thing here. For example, we can make this into a single line, remove that end, but that's not all because just like the other one, this is a function call. And so we can add the parentheses surrounding it and we can add the square brackets surrounding the last keyword list of the function call. In this case, is that do. And of course, we can transform this into a tuple. And now here, I got to make sure I get it in the right place. So let me save that. I'll go ahead and recompile. And let's just make sure that it's still working. It does. But that's not all because def module is also a macro. And so we can do the same thing. So we can do the same treatment. I'll remove the end. And then of course, we can make this into a function call. I'll add the parens there. And this is the keyword list. I'll add it like that. And we can transform this into an actual two tuple with the keyword do and then the rest the body of the module. So I'll go ahead and recompile, run our samples again, and everything still works. As you can see, this is a lot harder to read and that's why Elixir allows this kind of optional syntax to make it easier to read, easier to understand. But if you look at it, it this is kind of like a Lisp type thing where you're pa this is a, an atom and a keyword list. And then this another function call passes another argument and then a keyword list and so on and so forth. I thought this was pretty cool. I hope you like it.